Welcome everybody to another episode of One Stud at a Time. I am your host, Adrian Avila, and today I have the privilege and honor of having Senor Jose Nunez on the senior. episode. Senor. Oh, I think you said senior. No, <laughs> senior. <laughs> you know? Make me feel old. <laughs> Make me feel old. No, no, no. Jose, give everybody a, link, you know, a brief introduction mm-hmm. of who you are, what you do. Yeah, yeah. my name's Jose Nunez. Um, I've been a I'm a health and fitness coach as well as nutrition. I've been doing it for about seven years now, and I have my own gym here in downtown Azusa, which has been a dream and a goal of mine. And thanks to the support of my family and the AFA community, I've been able to achieve that. So, I mean, I'm living to my motto is to inspire everyone to pursue a healthy, um, active lifestyle through community. So yeah. it's been a blessing. That's awesome. Like, yeah, community is a big thing. I know that. Oh yeah. I see your guys running. I see your your members running up and down yeah, in Sousa. It's free advertisement, like, right? Just, <laughs> just make sure they have the shirt on, right? Yeah. <laughs> and that's when another thing for community like when you said mentioned shirts like yeah. something popped up it's like when people are wearing all these different shirts and it says afa with the different messages it does bring community because i've had so many people like oh I'm, i saw this person at target or at starbucks <laughs> and they're wearing the shirt and we instantly just connected yeah. so it is community is everything is. nothing worth doing can be done alone really no, right you yeah. can't do anything alone nah. that's like i think one of the hardest thing for people to understand it's like you know mm-hmm. what you, you gotta have there's a community behind you yeah. to, that supports you so uh really quick jose any hobbies you have besides working out and you know running your life out <laughs> 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 running my i actually just signed up for a 100 mile race so that's been keeping me busy but um besides that i like going to the beach hopping on the boogie board yeah. and just swimming you know catching the waves um running hiking but any other hobbies? Nah, man. Whatever it gets with the body. Yeah, moving, anything huh? that incorporates movement, I'm all for it. That's but I awesome. do need to find more. So a hundred, a hundred mile race. Yeah. It's all run, it's all running or is it's there in, biking? It's, so it's it? one big loop around um, Big Bear Lake. Okay. It's all so it's hiking, running, and you have 36 hours to finish it. Oh wow. Yes, yeah, so my friend Jose. You probably know Jose Vallejo. Yeah. Jose, yeah. He so was a guest here. He uh convinced me he convinced, convinced me you. so i'm like all right but the most i've ever done is 26 miles but it's 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 nice i like running it's funny because now that i've been doing it more i was actually sharing with Haley, my girlfriend um it's different because you know like i was born in mexico like right. i'm an immigrant so like i felt trapped my whole life in in a sense but when i run and explore and go to all these mountains it gives me that sense of freedom the sense to like be able to explore that yeah i can't yet you know it's it's, it's wild it's i thought about it, like wait maybe this is why i enjoy running so much that's beautiful yeah so there's a lot you can learn a lot and i'm doing it on my own too so a lot of alone time no music i don't do music so that and yeah. that i know is hard for people to yeah. not be able to listen to yeah. something while running yeah I know people who are like, oh, no, I need to have music. And I'm like, I know people who are like, no music because I like to be in my thoughts yeah. while I run. Well, I mean, think about it. We're always distracted, you yeah. know. You put music in the car. You have your headphones on, watching TV, Netflix on your phone. Like, there's never that sense of just stillness or, yeah. or quietness. Well, Sue laughs at me because, like, she'll go sometimes to the job sites with me. And I'll be driving with her. And I forget she's in the car. So I won't even take the carpool lane. I don't have the music on. And she's like, um, <laughs> you going to put any music on? Yeah. And I was like, oh, shoot, you're in the car today. And, I go, <laughs> and she goes, do you not listen to music? I go, sometimes I'm just like in my thoughts. Yeah. Like It's like my meditation time. Like I'm away from everybody. Mm-hmm. Like it's just the windows are down. Let the air hit my face. And yeah. again, it feels like that freedom of. You're, just, you're alone, you know, yeah. so it's, it's nice to spend some alone time. It, it's beautiful like that, man. Yeah. but Yeah. So it's a. You know, I, I enjoy I enjoy my drives, right? Like mm-hmm. like that. But running, man, shh, you won't even catch me running for the police. Li- <laughs> I'll be like, here, take me. Well, it's, it's little by little. You know, that's yeah. what people will set these, uh, like, unrealistic expectations for themselves. It's like they think just because everyone's running a marathon, if they sign up, they have to run the whole thing. Yeah. You know, it's like you don't have to. It's like you can walk, jog, walk, jog. And it's baby steps. Like, for everything we yeah. do, you know, when you first get hired to a job, you don't know much about it. Yeah. You'll be nervous, but the more you do it, month or two after, you're doing it pretty fluently. Yeah. But that goes to anything. No, it goes with anything, right? Yeah. And how you put it. And I tell people, you know, there's the 
you know, you have your ultimate goal, right? Yeah. Well, you're not going to just no. shoot and hit yeah. that goal like that. You got to take the steps to get there little by little. Yeah. Like there's there's a process behind it. Mm-hmm. The same thing, I guess, with running, right? Like, hey, dude, you're not going to stand there and do a 26-mile run overnight. Yeah. Like, it's going to take a couple of weeks, you know, months to get, you know, to that page. That the plan. Yeah, and there's other things behind it before you can even do it. Yeah. So I, I get you 100%, man. It's going to be probably the hardest thing I do. I'm, like I was sharing with the members, it's like uh, I've been kind of like stuck. I felt content. You know, mm-hmm. sometimes you get content, and I haven't really challenged myself. So I was like, man, I'm going to do it. I signed yeah. up for the L.A. the day before, and now it's fine. So it's also a great way to test my training right. and see if, like, what I do every day applies to everything you know so that's awesome but you know always challenging ourselves yeah. and whatever it is right it's i think what keeps us alive and going yeah yeah you know, i think when people get to a content state that's when you get stagnant and you're yeah. just like he's going to it's a slump easy. sometimes yeah. it's, and it's easy just to stay there i know I, I know trust me it's been a it's been one of my things too like i'm like i was telling you before we start recording mm-hmm. like i just started going back into like physical movements yeah. again like just actually getting back onto some kind of regimen. And I think that's one of the things that people don't realize is you have to have some kind of movement in mm-hmm. your life. Right? Like I, I always tell people, well, you know, I'm at the job site going up and down stairs all day, but that's different than, you know, and, yeah. And now, okay, like let me do some training on some mm-hmm. stuff. But running, no. yeah, I don't know. I'm not Try convinced. It, I'm not convinced yet. I no. I mean, a lot of the members never thought they'd be running, and then now they're doing three-mile run, six-mile run. So it goes right. back to power and community. You know, yeah. if you do it in groups, in a tribe, anything is possible. The last, thing, the last time I think I ran was, like, in high school football. High school? High school football. Back in 2004. 2000, no, 2003. It's the last time. Yeah, but running is not my thing, bro. Running is not <laughs> my thing. But like I said, you, we never so, know. Uh, you were doing the functional functional patterns. Yeah. Running, you, I'm sure our ancestors ran a lot to hunt. Well, yeah, run what for the saying? dinosaurs and everything. <laughs> 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 but no, that's yeah, that's that's a whole different thing. But you know, you were talking about you came from Mexico. Right? Yeah, there's a whole story behind that. Oh one. yeah, I mean that's growing up was. That's probably been the toughest, yet my biggest blessing in life. Yeah. You know, growing up, I didn't realize what being an immigrant or being born in Mexico or being undocumented meant until um, my senior year in high school. Mm. You know, that's when, um, like, my ultimate goal in life was to get a scholarship for football, and that was going to be, like, my way of paying my parents back for everything they did, that sacrifice they made for my siblings and I. Mm -hmm. So I committed my literally, like, eight, nine years to football and um i started i got all league led the team in tackles mvp and everything my senior year came and that's when i was an avid do you know what avid is yeah so that's when they help you apply for college financial aid i remember we were uh, filling out the fafsa right and the question said oh what's your social security number so i just called my mom like hey mom Necesito mi seguro social. Can we speak Spanish? Yeah. All right, necesito mi seguro social. Yeah. And she goes, um, oh, mijo, no tiene suno. I was like, <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. So I told my, my, my teacher, and she goes, okay. So she never encountered that. Right. So she said, um, do you have an I-10? I was like, I don't know. Isn't that for your taxes? I'm like 17. I'm, yeah. Yeah, so then that's when she told me your best bet is to go to community college. So I went to Citrus, same thing. I played both years. I started, and it was it was crazy because I would see my, my teammates g- getting offers from all these colleges and stuff like that, and I had a couple coaches reach out, but I would tell them my situation. Right. That I was born in Mexico. I didn't have a... So for those of you who don't know, if you're undocumented, it pretty much means you don't have a social security, you don't have a work permit, you can't get financial aid, you can't get loans, you can't get a driver's license and let alone get a regular job like all my friends were mm-hmm. doing, you know? So I told him my situation, and then he, I never heard back from him after that. Right. So then the end of the season came, and I saw all my friends getting scholarship, and it kind of just, that's when it hit me. I'm like, okay, it's probably because I can't leave the state, right. you know? So then when that happened, of course, I mean, when you work so hard for something and something that's out of your control completely just comes and takes it away. Mm-hmm. Like I was broken, I was mad, angry, sad, and just 
all the emotions. Yeah, man. Out. I was like, what the heck? What do I do now? And when you play or when you do something for so long, like that's your identity. And when it's taken away from you, like, what do you do now? Yeah. You know, and like, I'm not like for like two, three years. I was broken, confused. And like, I was smoking a lot of weed. Um, a lot of people don't know this, but maybe like two, three times a day. But the only thing that kept me like driven was working out with fitness. And that's another thing. It's like sports introduced me to community. It introduced me to fitness and um, also not knowing the language growing up. But with sports, you don't need to talk. Your actions speak for themselves. Yeah. You know. So that's why I fell, I fell in love with sports because... I could I I was always shy and timid, but sports, your actions spoke for themselves. Yeah, you know, and that was, it was weird. Now that I'm older, I think about it like I would always underestimate myself, or my, I felt like unworthy or less than other people just because I was um, undocumented or born in Mexico. But now that I'm older, it's like, dude, nobody even cares. Yeah, you know, but <laughs> it's the stuff that you, you play you play in your own head. You know, dude, you create you create a story, right? Yeah, and you believe this bullshit story that you create it really is and you know you're at your you're high right yeah. and everything is taken from you and guess what like a lot of people just plummet yeah right and like you said you started picking up smoking weed twice a day you know yeah and, and it, but it was hard it wasn't until one of my friends eric who um like i've always i've always had strong faith like i believe in god and he's i believe like he puts you through these obstacles for a reason and every obstacle is like a lesson or stepping stone that's preparing you for something greater to come. You know, and look at me now, like I have my own gym, but I wouldn't be where I'm at today if I didn't go through all those things. Mm -hmm. But my friend Eric is the one who really um, kept me accountable. He saw me at Triad when I was coaching, training before. Mm -hmm. And I mean, he knew I, I used to smell, I, but he was still very consistent. Like, yo, like, come with me to a conference, come with me to this, like. He would pray for me and everything. And I'm like, dude, get away from me. Like, I would get to the gym <laughs> and I would literally avoid him because I knew, like, but he told me, like, listen, I see something in you that you don't see in yourself. And that's why I've been very consistent at, like, trying to get to know you, trying to get to. And I ended up saying yes. And we went to a conference. And uh, one of the speakers, he said, the purpose in life is for us to. Um, tap into our skills and use them to like be a service to to humanity mm -hmm. you know like really reflect on that what do you enjoy and use it so when i heard that i took it back and i started going on hikes by myself and i would literally hike up the mountain and pray up there and just reflect like what am i good at what do i like what's what's been something that kept me happy or brought joy into my life and that's when sports my family very family oriented and then um community and it's crazy because now everything that I needed growing up and that I loved has ultimately led to athletics for all. Right. Yeah. And so it's, it's and like you said, you know, it's God gives us these opportunities or he gives us an how do I, how do I tell people? It's like you ask God, like, hey, you know what, give me the strength to do this right. Well, he gives you the opportunity to show you got the strength to go yeah. through it. But you on the other hand, it was I think it was more like, you know what? You're meant for something else, buddy. Mm -hmm. Like, let me take this identity that you think you're supposed to yeah. be, right? You're supposed to be this badass football player. No, did you, you? There's something else for you, yeah. right? I think for you, it's like the, there's a gratification there behind your community. Because yeah. I, I see the post that Dennis Lupita repost, mm -hmm. right, from there. It's like everybody there is, like, you guys are a community. Like, yeah. it truly, it's not like going to a 24-hour fitness where, no. you know, Joe Schmo's on this machine and, you know, Nancy's over here, right? Yeah. It's like, no, no, everybody together is doing it. So the support's there, yeah. right? And it's, it's wild. I mean, they know. I literally just started with, all right, let's start doing boot camps on Saturdays at 8 a.m. at random parks. Mm -hmm. You know, I never thought I had my own gym and then. We started doing it. For, I was doing it for free. First, the first class, there was probably 15 people. I would say 12 of them were my family members. Right. You know, and then probably like them three. And um, from then, it just little by little, it started to build up, build up. And then they they told me, Jose, why don't you charge? I said, I'm not going to charge. What the yeah. heck? I'm just we're just hanging out and working out on Saturdays. And then so they, we made this donation bin. They forced me to do, all right, at least do a donation bin. So I did the donation bin. And I still have it to this day. And um, 
So then I left it there and people would start to donate money and stuff. I'm like, oh, what? Okay. So I, but I used that money to make shirts. Yeah. With the AFA logo and stuff like that. And then more and more people started coming. And then I started charging. I didn't want to charge for like the, the longest, like three, four months. I'm not going to charge. I'm not going to charge. And eventually I charged $5. Right. And then little by little, the community got bigger and I was training at triad and then, um, I was teaching a bunch of boot camp classes too, where I got to meet people. And the name of the class was boot camp. And I asked the owner, "Can I switch the name of the class?" Because on the schedule I said boot camp. Yeah. Because most people, it's boot camp. It's very military, or they're doing burpees or throwing yeah. tires and stuff like that. So I told him, "Can I switch it to athletics for all?" And when I switched the name on the schedule, people of all ages started coming in because it felt welcoming, you right. know. And ever since then, it just took off it's all about how you how you market it right yeah and it's true it's like you know people think of boot camp like oh dude they're gonna have me freaking you know yeah throwing a tire you know that's like double my size or some shit like that <laughs> right so uh, no and and being able to invite people like that and you know i i'm a big advocate you know what we got to have movement in our life mm-hmm. you, know, you just can't stay not doing anything yeah and just just hearing your story with the, you know, the whole coming from Mexico and like, you're not even knowing that you had a social security. Yeah. I mean, I yeah. still, I, I mean, I do now, but it's, <laughs> it's temporary. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, again, to, just to bring some awareness to, um, DACA, do you know yeah. what DACA is? Yep. Yeah. So it's deferred action of childhood arrivals. So if I never had DACA, I would still be probably working under the table, yeah. you know, not being able to do what I am able to do now. So when DACA came, it was like a reset button to my life. I was able to get a work permit, a social, and kind of get moving rather than just being trapped with nothing. And what, and what's ama- I find it crazy, and I mean, like, this is the first time I think I'll ever bring a political view here. It's like there's people in this country that are making something for themselves. They're being an active member of society. Mm-hmm. And yet again... It's like you're jumping through fucking flaming hoops that, you know, yeah. you can't even fit through sometimes yeah. to get, you know, just to get documented. Yep. And, I mean, you're attesting to that, like being in, being able to provide back to the mm-hmm. community. Right? Like you said, you were doing boot camps for free. Yeah. Right. And I'm pretty sure those boot camps or, you know, the, the classes were getting filled up. Oh, yeah. And what you're doing today, it's amazing because I've seen... Like some of the, tra- I know when they repost like some of the transformations mm-hmm. going on, I'm like, man, I go, that's, that's amazing. And yeah. guess what? You just saved somebody's life from having a heart attack, yeah. right? Or, you know, from getting diabetes, but the awareness you bring to them, mm-hmm. it's inviting. What's a, also that, like, not just the creating a welcoming environment, but also like educating them, Yeah. you know, I mean, you can, cause when you learn something, you can keep that and retain that for the rest of your life. Yeah. You know, where it's like, so education is also something I value, you yeah. know, and everyone should value. Uh, definitely. Whether, whether it's like you're, you know, you're, you're learning something on your own. Yeah. Right. Or you're going somewhere to go learn something yeah. like you got, we always got to keep that going on. And I tell everybody, like, I'd learn something new every day. Mm-hmm. Um, actually, I was talking to Des and Lupita when they're at one of the job sites. And it's like, dude, I didn't know that this is how certain people apply stucco so it doesn't crack. My dad does stucco. He does construction. Oh, shoot. So he will give you a lesson on everything, man. <laughs> right? He's been that's, doing it for a while. That's so. awesome. But, yeah, I was like, I, I learned something new about this stuff. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, you know what? Let me share this with people I know, right? And so it was just something that, hey, I learned something. Let everybody else learn yeah. something, too. Right? Yeah, and you, you can't be greedy, you know? Just nah. share it out to the world. I mean, what you throw out to the world will come back directly to you. Oh, for you sure. You know, it's a... Uh, the boomerang effect. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. And I mean, I mean, you could attest that directly, yeah. right? It's yeah. It's. I mean, I remember who was. Uh, there was this lady. She said, "I don't know. At first, I thought you were fake. You're just so positive all the time. You have great energy, and you're always happy and jolly. And uh, I had to find for myself. And you know what? At first, I was like, "There's no way. That's so fake." And after I met you, that is who you are. Yeah. Like, well, yeah. I mean. I'm I'm blessed. Um, yeah, we've all gone gone through things, but there's already so much negativity going on in the world. Mm-hmm. Why, that's why, why I add more to it? Yeah, huh? that's why I purposely um, named myself. Well, my Instagram name is Be the Light. Yeah, because it's also a way to keep myself accountable. You know, if it says Be the Light, I can't be 
doing dumb stuff all yeah, the time. You can't you know? be salty and yeah. you can't be throwing shade out there, yeah. right? I get you, 100%. Yeah. And I, I could, you know, I've, I think I, when was the last time like I saw you in public? We were at Cafe Cultura one day, I think. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, then, I saw congregation, too. Uh, congregation, too. Last week? Last week. But I'm talking about, like, we were, so we were at um, Cafe Cultura. Mm -hmm. And this guy has a full table of everybody just, like, showing up from oh. after a workout, right? <laughs> and I'm like, this guy is just, like, happy after a workout. Some people are, like, just grumpy after a workout. Oh, yeah. I'm like, how are you grumpy after a workout when a workout gives you the happy endorphins? Mm -hmm. Like, you must, like force yourself to be miserable right like yeah because there's like i go i can't figure out how that works yeah. but like to see you in like that community feel it was like dude you guys are all happy about it like you guys i saw how drenched in sweat y'all mm -hmm. were you know i'm like like you know and they were happy yeah. to be out and i think it's, i think it's like you know you rub off and you give off that energy yeah. to them i don't know i mean i'm just being myself you know but yeah. um yeah, that's the beauty about it. Um, we work out, and we're always down to do something. Yeah. Like, if we could see each other Monday through Sunday, like, we'll be there working out and then hanging out. But that's another great thing. It's like Lupita and Dennis, that was AFA's first home. Mm -hmm. You know, that's when we started doing, like, karaoke nights, watching boxing fights, or just random potlucks and parties. Like, that. Yeah. they helped build the foundation. And, um, and that's... Because when you work out... With, with someone at the gym it's just that one hour there's not much to talk about because yeah. everyone's busy trying to get their workout in yep. but what you do outside now you get to really stop talk to them connect they're gonna look different because they're not wearing the workout clothes now that you get to see right. who they are who they <laughs> truly are yep and that's why we do a lot of events and gatherings outside of the gym yeah because it's important yeah and that's probably what's helped afa be so successful now like i I mean, yeah, it's very successful. I mean, you have a big, you have a good sized building right now that you guys are in, huh? Yeah, it's, uh, it's about twenty three hundred feet. I just wish the the ceiling was high. It's twelve, I think, twelve feet. So, uh, oh my god! And then I wish I had more like open windows because it's it's gonna get hot. Summer's coming. Oh yeah, I can already feel summer. It. Summer's coming. AC. I have a full <laughs> blast and it still doesn't do it. So I'm like, I don't know what to do. But. I don't know what to do. Have you heard of uh, the big ass fans? It's a company? I have, but they're too loud. Really? Well, I haven't heard of that one, but the industrial ones? No, it's called Big Ass Fan is the oh. name of the fan. And it's a, it doesn't go, like, fast, but it's the, the, um, the wings are so long that it pushes the air quite a bit, and it actually drops down the temperature pretty quick. I'm going to look into it. But you should look into that. I'll probably break the building. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm going to need. You to talk to the Let's owner, go. man. Let's go talk to him. <laughs> but I know one of your challenges, you know, was definitely like trying to find yourself again. Mm -hmm. Like, what was that final moment where you were like, you know what? Like, I got to make the change. Like, I can't continue, you know, smoking yeah. out and and being miserable about this thing. Like, yeah. what what was your what was that turning point for you? Well, that that conference really um, kind of set the spark. When the guy told me, like, what what do you enjoy? What are some of your gifts and stuff like that? But it's also something that's always kept me focused and driven is um, it goes back again to my parents, like, making that sacrifice, you yeah. know? And it's, like, them doing that, seeing how much they've worked to provide for us and me not do something about it, that's just, like, a... It's disrespectful yeah. to them, to myself, you know, and that, my brothers, my sisters. And then having the support of the members in the gym, they don't know it, but they also keep me accountable, mm -hmm. you know. And I don't know. I don't know when I just flipped the switch. Yeah. I mean, I've always pretty been pretty driven. I remember when I signed up for Azusa Raiders, I was 10 pounds overweight. I was 10 pounds overweight, and the coach said, you need to lose 10 pounds in a week if you want to play. I was like, what? So uh, literally, my dad helped me put one of those trash bags, uh -huh. and I put it around, and I would just run around Memorial Park, run, run, run the whole practice. And I would see my team practicing, but I couldn't practice with them until I lost those 10 pounds. Wow. And I would just run every day, every day. And um, so it's like, I don't know, it's always been 
in me. That fire's always been in me. But fire's always been there. Yeah. I mean, I find it amazing because there's people in this world that <laughs> will not take the opportunities that they have, mm -hmm. and you get an opportunity pulled away from you, and you're able to pivot. Yeah. Into this, into something different. Right, and people would just be like, "Oh, poor me, poor me. Oh, I didn't get this because of you know so and so is yeah. you know." Instead, you're like, "You know what, dude? Let's figure let's figure out the new way and let's let's make something yeah. happen, right?" Well, I always I like to call it the like the immigrant mindset. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like we since we don't have as many opportunities, we truly value the ones we do have. Yeah. You know, and it makes you work harder because we do have to overcome more obstacles than some of the other people you know 100%. and at the moment you're like, oh why me why does this happen to me da -da 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 -da. but later on when like now that i'm older i'm like dude all that helped me strengthen my mindset strengthened like everything you know right. like now it's whenever i face adversity or something it's like i'm used to it mm -hmm. and um that's why i say it's been my at the moment i was embarrassed about it and i hated it but now it's been my biggest blessing and i i share about it openly now that's beautiful yeah that's beautiful and i know you're you know you're talking you know you did these i don't even want to call them boot camps but i mean that's the kind of yes we do so at afa it's not boot camp uh -huh. we everyone thinks it's boot camp no it's we do strength training and it's all programmed throughout the week so if we warm up for 10 minutes strength training for 20 to 25 minutes and then at the end we do some sort of conditioning circuit or like mobility or partner workout and stuff like that but it's structured um it's a structured plan it's not just boot camp turn on 30 seconds on 30 seconds off and then just go yeah you know it's all programmed and uh i like it i like your program but just the running part bro like we, run, sure we don't even run that me. much <laughs> We run Wednesdays. We run Wednesdays, and oh, they so all don't go Wednesdays for yeah. me. They they call it Wicked Wednesdays. Okay. They have a name for everything. They call it Wicked Wednesdays. We run three times around the block. That's oh. it. Well, wow, it's a pretty big block, bro. You know. So three, three <laughs> times around the block is one mile. Yeah. So. Oh, one mile that you know, yeah, <laughs> one mile too much. Just joking. Yeah. <laughs> no, but um, it's pretty. It's pretty cool because, I um, like I said, it's. The whole I've seen Lupita's transformation. I've seen Dennis's, you know, mm -hmm. transformation. Dennis be getting some guns now, you know, uh, or he's getting tighter shirts. I don't know which one, you know. <laughs> Schmedium. <laughs> he's a Schmedium. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but no, that's awesome. And so, like, you know, here at McKinley, like we were we're trying to develop like a with Kristen. We're trying to develop like a little workout thing that mm -hmm. we can do with the kids here. So I, she showed me the tour, and they have a lot. The kids. I I, th I just feel like it's getting them to uh, um, understand the amenities and the opportunities they have here. It's but once they do and then they embrace it. Yeah. I walk. It's a nice. It's a nice, nice little campus. campus yeah, huh? yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I'm gonna. We're looking at redoing the um, the volleyball court, mm -hmm. but they want to make it like a dual, like multiple purposes for it. So we're looking at that. So. We'll figure that one out. But, yeah. I mean, you saw the facility and everything. But, like, I tell people this facility isn't like any facility out there. It's a – Yeah. It's completely different. It's, it's, you know, they – these kids have, like, nice little cottages that they go through. And they have a, f a nice pool that just mm -hmm. got redone. I saw it. I didn't even have – Azusa High School didn't even have a pool. It still don't got it's a pool. It still doesn't got a pool. That's what I'm saying. And then I see this, I'm like, wow, that's so nice. Yeah. You know, the fact that they have – stuff for i saw the the softball field the soccer yeah. field and the volleyball and then but not just sports but also more of the artistic side yeah. you know kids can make music podcasts yeah. it's like inclusive for all it really is Did you see the little gym that we built yeah, up yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I saw it. They were, they're talking about making it a bigger, bigger gym now for them but that's something for the future right yeah well jose well thank you for joining us today you know you guys can catch jose in a Sousa, you know, on Wicked Wednesdays, for those who want to, you know, every burn some Wednesday. calories. <laughs> yeah, every day. But Wicked Wednesdays, you run around the block three times. You can see me at congregation on Wednesdays at Loteria. Wow. <laughs> Work out first and then go to congregation after. <laughs> for Loteria. <laughs> you see Adrian there. There you go. Jose, let people know where they can find you or how they can find you. Yeah, man. Uh, th on Instagram, it's uh, underscore be the light. And then also um, follow us at Athletics for All. Don't miss out. And then we do offer a free one week pass if you want to come check us out and if you enjoyed what you uh, what we talked about today. Yeah. 
do you have members that come from like far out at all? Or is no, it like I mean Monrovia, Whittier, San Dimas, Covina, even like Whittier, all the even Whittier is a drive to yeah. GSC, so there, there's something Chino they're Hills. working on Chino Hills. Oh yeah. shoot, there's something there. At Athletics for all. If you know people are driving that far, because mm-hmm. they say people won't drive more than like two miles to a gym, right? But you got people coming from Chino Hills and mm-hmm. Whittier. It says something, you guys. So definitely give them a look and. You know, see if it's for you. Check out Wicked Wednesdays, you know? It's for everyone. It's for everyone. (laughs) Well, thank you again, Jose. Of course. You know, we'll catch you guys on the next one. Thank you very much.